Hello TLC and uh, Pink Sneakers Productions. Uh, hello to Rebecca since she's the only one I've pretty much dealt with. Um, hope everyone's having a great day out. I think you guys are down in Florida. Anyway, my name is Scott Dininger. Uh, I go by Scott Derringer for comedy. Uh, I'm 34 years old. Uh, my occupation is a uh, stand-up comedian, freelance writer, freelance comedy writer, and I also work at Wrigley Field as a waiter where the Chicago Cubs play. I grew up in suburban Chicago in Joliet, loving the Cubs. And then I went to broadcasting school with dreams of announcing for the Chicago Cubs because I wasn't very good at baseball. Um, and now I'm a, I'm a grown man, and uh, I serve carrot cake. I don't use the bat that I dreamed of. I use a spatula. So uh, dreams can come true in a really odd sense. Um, I live about an hour away from my mom. I live in the city of Chicago, uh, just north of Wrigley Field, and my mom lives in Shorewood, which, like I said, is about an hour away. Um, how my mom's hoarding has progressed, it's, uh, it's come in waves. Um, it, it, it was really bad for a while. Now it's not as bad. Uh, I was really bad for like, you know, like five, six years ago it was really bad. But now with my sister living back at home, with the baby, and with, uh, with my mom's mother-in-law living there, Rose, um, it's a lot of the clutter is out of those two rooms that, where they live, and now that stuff is kind of strewn about the house. Um, she has gotten rid of a lot of stuff. She's burned a lot of stuff. She has big bonfires in the back. Um, some family members have come over and actually helped, uh, but still, like, they've put a dent in it, but, I mean, there's still, <laughs> there's still a lot of work to be done. Um, I've tried to help many times. Uh, when she does, see, here's the thing is that she does great things. She gets the stuff out of, here's what she does. She gets stuff out of garbage, brings it home, unloads it, and sometimes it sits where she unloads it, whether that be the front porch, the side porch, the back porch. I mean, she's driven through the backyard and unloaded stuff on the back deck, and it just has sat there for... And my stuff has gotten... Like, I had this really great Cubs uh, old-style mirror, and it got shoved in with the other garbage, and the thing pretty much got ruined, and uh, she wasn't... I wasn't happy about that, and she knew it. Um... And she's like, I didn't know. Yeah, you knew. You knew that that, that was, that, that had been around for 25 years. Um, but I've tried to help, like, when she brings the stuff for the battered women's shelter or the crisis pregnancy center or the Humane Society or the American veterans, uh, the American war vets. She'll wash that stuff and she'll take it to get, take it to where it needs to go. But she can't really carry it all, so I kind of load it and I unload it. She does a lot of it on her own, too, because I'm not there a lot. I'm on the road like I am right now. Um, but uh, she puts her body through a lot. With, with She's diabetic. She's arthritic. Um, she, she hurts all the time. You know, I spent a couple hundred bucks to get her some of these, these uh, I don't know, like massaging things. It's got, like, these scents, and they're, like, these... Heat and, heat and cold packs that you put on your body. I got her those for Christmas just to help her because I know she's not good to herself when it comes to that. She definitely puts everybody else first. It's not even a question. Um, but I've helped clean at times. I've, took, I've taken it upon myself to like, okay, I'm going to do this today. And then she comes home and she'll go in the garbage, literally that's sitting on the curb, and she'll go through everything that I threw away and she'll cry because I threw away like a, I don't know, a, a, a broken picture frame or, um, you know, a pair of socks that had a hole in it. But she knew where the other sock was and somebody could, uh, somebody could use it. Um, so I, I've gone with her, but, but the thing is with the, with the clothes is she'll wash the clothes, but people who live in the house, the, their, their clothes will have to wait until the clothes that she had out of the garbage are washed. And it just, it's, it's kind of, you know, it's kind of a weird dynamic that you've got to wait for a stranger's laundry before you can do your own. Um, she, I mean, she's come a long way, but it's only because the baby's there, Tyler's there. She has to, you know, she watches him when my sister's at work, and she loves it. Because now that her mother's in the nursing home, Yaya used to live with my mom. Now that Yaya's in the nursing home, uh, she can't, you know, that's been really hard on my mom. And 
we had to have like a family meeting and say that it's best for Yaya to go to the nursing home because she she really can't walk right now because of the she had a stroke. We don't think she's going to be able to walk on her own again. She wouldn't be able to function back and forth in my mom's house, um, and my mom's just not physically capable of taking care of her more than the house. Even if the house I think was immaculate, I don't really think my mom would be able to take care of her just because of her own physical condition. Um, growing up though, my mom's my, my mom and dad were married until I was 12, and the house was immaculate. I mean, for the most part, it, you know, it was a. But my dad just my dad was like the house guy and didn't you know nothing was out of place. My mom worked a lot. She sold Tupperware. She was a nurse. She she did nurse jobs on the side. She was never. She didn't have the freedom to, to to go. She had two kids to raise, and then my sister came along. She had a third kid to raise. You know, so it was never a mess. That's why this is so. Like, where did this come from? My grandfather, her father, Yaya's husband, owned or he sold. He actually sold among other things. He sold adult movies at a flea market out of the trunk of his car. And he eventually did it on one leg because he's diabetic and he had to lose one of his the bottom of one of his legs. So, you know, I had a one legged bald grandfather who sold porno out of the trunk of his car at a flea market. I don't know anybody else like that. So I feel and, and here's what I do. I talk about it, I write about it, I talk about it on stage. Some people are like, Come on, you're make God strike me dead if that's not my grandfather. When my mom was growing up, the washer and dryer at home broke and instead of my grandfather fixing it or getting it fixed or buying new ones, he went out and bought Yaya a laundromat. So uh, he was able to do all of his laundry than everybody else's. So I think it's pretty much genetic. And the thing is, I'm kind of, I've kind of developed my own little hoarding, but I hoard my own stuff. Like I've got a lot of baseball caps and T-shirts and things that I don't want to part with that like sit underneath my bed or in the closet. I mean... Not nearly as bad as my mother, because again, here's the bottom line with my mom. This is other people's stuff. It's not like stuff that she's accumulated on her own, like her stuff. This is stuff that she's gotten out of the garbage. She used to own a clothing store called Bernie's Big Bargains. And that's, it was like a, like a, fat, peop, a fat person's resale clothing shop. But let's say three items were sold that week, like 50 items came in. So the supply and demand wasn't really there, so eventually you had like 200 items sitting there, but only like 20 went out. And all that stuff is still throughout the house somewhere, down in the basement, in the crawl space, in closets scattered about. Um, how has mom's junking affected me? Uh, well, one time I, got her, I bought her a cell phone, and she lost her cell phone. Um, she lost it. it junking. She doesn't remember where she lost it, but, you know, she remembers junking that day. She at least was honest with me. And, uh, but, but the thing is, I act as an enabler. Because, I mean, I do comedy. This, this, this sweatshirt, out of the garbage. I went over to my mom's, like, I needed something to wear, because I was just kind of passing through, or maybe the weather changed, because that's what happens in Chicago. And, uh, I was like, hey, I need a sweatshirt. And it's not, sure, I have one, Scott. My mom will say, well, what kind do you want? You know, do you want a zip up? Do you want a, you know, regular hoodie with, you know, no zip? And she's got everything. Um, and I've got a lot of furniture in my apartment. You know, I'll be like, Mom, I need a coffee table. So I'm as much to blame, not as much to blame, but I'm, you know, I'm to blame. Because, you know, she's helping her oldest child, who's me. And, uh, you know, she's helped my brother. She's helped my sister as well. Um, but Yaya, when she was living there, like, the way the hoardings affected people, Yaya wouldn't let people come over to visit. She was kind of, like, shut in for a while. She didn't go visit people, uh, or she didn't go see, she didn't see people unless we brought her to see them. Um, I'm going to stop this right now so I can upload it to YouTube, and I'll finish uh, in a little bit.